Welcome to Inside Out. This week, coming to you from the heart of the High Weald in East Sussex. Later, I'll be exploring this amazing countryside as it sweeps into Kent. Now, if I stood here and looked at that view 500 years ago, it would look pretty much the same. It's the High Weald sweeping right across the middle of Kent and Sussex. So how did it come to look the way it does? And what's it got to do with greedy pigs and heavy metal? The Weald is designated an area of outstanding natural beauty, and with good reason. It's essentially the area sandwiched between the North and South Downs. It stretches across Kent, Sussex and part of Surrey. So, how did the Weald get here in the first place? Well, it all began a long, long time ago. The southeast of England was a series of layers which had settled at the bottom of the sea. Here to explain more is our resident expert, Dr Ed. 50 million years ago, Italy crashed into Europe and it buckled the whole of southern England into the shape of a dome. This dome emerged from the sea as a huge mountain of chalk. Then the rain eroded away the top, leaving chalk hills to the north and south, what's now the north and south downs. In between is the high and low weald. High and low because there tends to be harder sandstone in the high bits and softer clay in the low bits. So that so is the high wheel that we can see. That's the high wheel, yes. Wow. We're looking at the high wheel on the other side of the Kentish low wheel. The low wheel's massive. The wheel is absolutely massive. You would be able to see what's under the southeast perfectly clearly if you could slice it in two. As luck would have it, that's exactly what the English Channel does. So at the South Downs around Eastbourne, the ground is made of white chalk. Further along where the Weald hits the sea near Hastings, you can see the ground is made of red sandstone. A bit further to the North Downs near Dover, we're back to white chalk again. But it wasn't just geology which shaped the Weald of today. Take the sunken lanes for instance. You'll often see roads which pass through steep banks on each side, and yet there's no river or stream which could explain the little valley shape. So, what is responsible for sunken lanes? Well, he is. It's a surprising fact that sunken lanes were made by pigs. The people who run the rare breed centre near Tenterden in Kent know a lot about these particular animals. So do you think pigs like these could have actually made the sunken lanes? Oh yeah, easily. Um, they'll just clear anything that they come across, anything in the path. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> you see, in medieval times, people used to drive pigs into the woods in the autumn to feed them on acorns. On their way, the greedy pigs ate everything in their path. And here we are in an absolutely typical wheeled and sunken lane. This was not made by a river. This was made by millions of pigs trotters. Uh, centuries of migration, year after year, you could the animals coming down to feed on the acorns. And of course that stopped any trees growing, and that's how the first settlements appeared in the woods. So this would originally have been a lot higher above our heads? This road would have originally been above our heads. And as the pigs arrived here, they would spread out into the forest and they would eat all the acorns and the beech moss and they would create permanent clearings like this because nothing could grow. And this is the origin of our dens, because a den means pig pasture. And that's why so many places like Tenterden have den in their name. Hence the concentration in one area of places like Smarden, Biddenden, Bethesden, High Holden, Tenterden and so on. So pigs have certainly made their mark on the Weald. But where does the name Weald come from? This entire area was once covered by dense ancient forest and that, that's the origin of the name because Weald means Wald, means woodland or forest in German. And of course Anglo-Saxon comes from the German and hence the ancient word is still survives in the present place name. 
We know that on Doomsday in 1086, the High Weald remained the most densely wooded area of England. Today it has the highest proportion of ancient woodland in the country. And a lot of that woodland is coppice woodland. But what is that exactly? Alan Sage has been creating coppices for seven years, so he should know. Coppice woodland is cutting trees close to the ground so that you get a lot of tree trunks from one stall, um, which produces a greater quantity of wood per acre than standard woodland. So that means instead of one big trunk, you have several thinner stems. And paradoxically, even though the forest looks thinner, you get more wood per acre. And this is another feature of the weald, something called a hammer pond. Hammer ponds! Coppice woodland! What's the connection? Well, I know a man with the cast iron facts. Jeremy Hodgkinson is from the Wealdon Iron Research Group. He took me to a rather special place in the High Weald. So special, in fact, that the owner would rather we didn't tell you exactly where it is. So what's so special about it? Well, this actually is, is where they made iron. And they were making iron all over the southeast for a very long period of time. This is one of the best preserved ironworks in the Weald. We're standing on what was a dam which provided water power. Why would they pick a site like this for the iron industry? Well, because here you have everything that you need for making iron. You've got the valley with its water, you've got the woods for the charcoal, and you've got the iron ore. And here's a piece of iron ore. In fact, the Weald was the country's top producer of iron twice in history the first in Roman times and the second in the Tudor period. But the Weald and Iron Research Group attempt to make iron the way they did in Roman times, just using raw materials and pumping bellows by hand. So why are you doing this? Well, it's part of our way of understanding how iron was made in the Weald long ago. It was in the later Tudor period when they used dams to provide power. Now over there was where there was a pond that all that long green field used to be a pond and they stored the water in the pond and then used the water to turn water wheels to power bellows which pumped the air into the furnaces. So that pond would have been called a furnace pond. This one near Horseman Den was used to provide power for hammers and so it is known as a hammer pond. So that's why the Weald has hammer ponds and coppice woods. As a side effect, coppicing lets more light in through the trees, so plants can grow on the floor. The Weald is famous for its bluebell woods. For that we can thank, of all things, the iron industry. So that's the connection between pigs, iron and the Weald. And we've only just scratched the surface. They didn't make it an area of outstanding natural beauty for nothing, and it really is a gem of the southeast.